All righty, good to be here today. It is La Verde, Puerto Rico. All righty, I'm Pastor Corey, and it's good to have you here, or good to have you listening in. Well, we said last week that if you're a Christian or if you are a Christ follower, Jesus did not choose you to go to heaven. He did not choose you to go to heaven. Nope, that isn't what the scripture says. Scripture says that he chose you, that while you're on your way to heaven, your life will bear fruit. Your life will be fruitful. If it's just a matter of getting to heaven, then you got saved, boom, boom, go to heaven. No, he has things for you and I to do here on earth. For example, years ago, Sister Maribel Crane, who has ministered here, uh, invited Diana Mariani, I think out of Siebel, to minister to, to uh, some, some women, right, who were pregnant and then weren't married. And uh, that ministry is still being carried on by Diana. That's part of the blueprint that God has given for her. So if you're interested in what she does and maybe coming alongside her, talk to her. Raise your hand there. That's Diana Mariani. Okay. Praise the Lord. Woo All right. Good. So. If you're a Christian, you're here on the earth to get to heaven one day, but while you're on your way to heaven, you are to bear fruit. Jesus said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you that you would go and bear fruit. That's John 15, 16. The same chapter, verse 8, says, this, by this you will be my disciple. You will be my follower, that you bear a little bitty fruit. No, that you bear much fruit. So the Father is glorified. Now, I need four volunteers who would who would like to say, yeah, I'd like my life to be fruitful. Four volunteers. Amen. Come on. I can pick out really quick. There's one. Another volunteer. All right. There's another volunteer. Okay. Gail, we need one more lady. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah. You, yeah. Okay. We got one, two. I want four. Who's the other? Gail. You know, yeah. Gail. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Four ladies. Okay. Now. The thing is, and uh, a testimony of God's faithfulness, because there used to be a man here who used to manage big casinos in Puerto Rico. But I remember in the prayer groups, he says, oh, God. He, he said, brothers, please pray for me so I can get out of this. And he's out of that, and now he's a doorkeeper in the house of God. But uh, So this reminds me of the casino. So what we're going to do here is uh, each one of you, you're going to get a number. Now, those who, who get an even number, guess what? The even numbers are those who are going to have fruitful lives. Ooh, the odd okay. numbers, uh, not so <laughs> much so. So who wants to go first? Gail. Gail. Okay, Gail, you uh, you just tell me when to stop, okay? Stop. Is there it is? 24. Look at this. We were just talking about Psalm 68. What is that? 68. <laughs> An even number. So, fruitfulness. Okay, you are blessed with fruitfulness. Wow. Praise the Lord. That's a good one. Okay, who's next? Me, me, me. They win. Okay, you got to say win. If it's a young. Another even number. <laughs> okay, look at that. 58. That's a good song too, but I'll not be turning to Psalm 58. 68, okay. All right. So, call it luck, call it whatever, but they're destined to be fruitful. Okay, who's next? Okay. Stay with. Ready? <laughs> Sister, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but it's, Psalm, it's 59. It's an odd number. Uh, <laughs> I like to. Now, I tell you what, so, I could go off on Psalm 59, but I'll just stop right there. Um, but I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your, of your, I will sing of your glory in the morning. You have been my defense. You have been my refuge in the day of my trouble. For God is my refuge. God is my strength. Folks, get the word of God into you. Yeah. It changes you. It transforms you. Yeah. Ah! Yes. Okay. But, sorry, uh, odd, you get a little fruit, but not much. Okay? Okay, so yes. There it is. He's already winning. 
another, even another. <laughs> wow. So we have three fruitful ones here, and the other one is sort of... <laughs> Two fruitful. 52. Uh, Psalm 52 says that, um, talks about rich people who put their trust in their riches. Mm -hmm. David says, but I, it says, I put my trust in the mercy of Amen. God. You know, to praise the Lord. Okay, so what's the point, y'all? Just give my hand, all right? Yay! <laughs> you like it? You want it? Go ahead. You want to keep it? All right. What's the point of all this? Is, is this the way it is? That, that some Christians uh, are ordained to be fruitful and other Christians, well, it's the luck of the draw and they're unlucky and no, nah, no, nah, nah. Well, thankfully we have God's word to instruct us in these things. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the word God tells us how to be fruitful. Now, a couple of years ago, David, all right, gave me this thing right here. Okay? And this thing, boy, it has screwdrivers, cutters, pliers, I mean, you name it, it has it. This thing does, I don't know, 15, 20 different things. This thing is like the Word of God. Because it says in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says all of God's Word is inspired by God. It is God, God breathed, literally. And it's profitable to us for doctrine, for teaching, instruction, rebuke, encouragement, a lot of different things so that the man or woman of God might be thoroughly equipped. So if you and I are going to be fruitful and turn to somebody and just say, bear fruit, brother, bear fruit, sister. Bear, yes. Fire. You know? And so, so the Word of God instructs us in this. And as it was, and uh, tell you what, the Word of God is the most Oh, how would I put it? Uh, it's the most practical book that you will ever read. You know, some people say, oh, the Bible, that's outdated. That's a lot. The Word of God is so practical for every area of your life. You know, and I know this, the devil want to keep you from, from, uh, from the Word of God. I think it was Dwight Moody who says, this book, this book will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. So get into the book. So very, 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 very important. So uh, we have been saying in these days that part of <coughs> fruitfulness is the fruit of our lips. And so we also have been saying, mentioning Mark Johnson's life verse, okay? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now, I read the news uh, because it lets you know what's going on in the world. And I'm going to tell two stories that are not happy stories, but we're going to follow up with a happy story, okay? Um, but you read the news and you just realize these people were not living according to God's word and it cost them their life. Story number one, just recently, two women in a parking lot, I think it was in, in Florida, uh, and they're arguing about who has the right of way. And the one woman is 26 years old. She has her two-year-old child in the car. She has a baby in the car, and her husband is there. And she gets into with this other woman. And so the woman with the baby walks away. The other one goes and gets a gun and shoots her in the back, and she dies. So sad. So senseless. Why? Over some words. Over a parking lot. A parking space. Who has the right of way? Listen, the, 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 it's so true. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I've told Carmen many, 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 many times because there's some crazy road wet rage people out there. If somebody wants to whatever, whatever, you just ignore them. You bless them. You go your way. And I've also told her, somebody wants to steal the car, give them the keys. The body that is stealing the car, you bless them. You pray for them. You understand, but I mean, life is precious. You know, the other story happened in Brazil just this past week. It was an open air uh, uh, pool hall, and uh, two guys go in, and they're playing some pool there, a couple of games, and they lost. They're probably betting money on it. Well, the, the winners, I guess, bad mouth them. Bad mouth them. Whatever they said to him, you know, you guys stink, you whatever, whatever, whatever. The two guys left, go to the car, get two guns, 
And it was five or seven people that day that they killed. Oh, including a 12-year-old girl. Listen, God, God's word is true. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So, you know, people may feel whatever, macho or whatever it is, speaking words like that, you know, you, blank, blank, blank. It can cost you your life. So words are powerful. Words are powerful for the evil, but also for the good. And I asked John to come and share a story. Whenever I hear this, I said, this is an illustration of how to speak life. While he's coming up, say to yourself, self, self. speak life. Speak Turn to your neighbor. Neighbor, speak life. All right, John. You know, I'm learning some things in life. We can either react or we can respond. You understand the difference, right? There's one's the flesh, one's the spirit. I'm glad that um, Pastor Corey asked me to share about the time I was operating in the spirit. Instead of the time the taxi driver almost ran someone over here on the side and I got out and this young punk, I started banging. He banging his car for him to get out. I won't tell that one. <laughs> I could be shot from that one. Um, I just don't want people to think that the, it's a challenge each time. You understand? Mm -hmm. When you see someone operating really, then you have to either react or respond. So I moved to Puerto Rico November 17, 1990. And boy, was I in for a surprise. I came down here to hire someone for a job, and I had a ticket to return in 10 days. I'm still here <laughs> because I fell in love with the island and the people. But one of the things that I hadn't figured out yet was the highway merengue and the driving game. When you first moved here from the States, I'm like, whoa, you gotta be kidding me. So back then, Plaza Las Americas, the mall was one of the few malls here, and it was one of the highest revenue malls, and it happened to be selling clothing, beach clothing, into one of the playero, the store, the store playero in the mall. And you know Plaza Las Americas at Christmas? Yeah. And I had purchased a thousand dollar Datsun B210. We called it the Guerrapata. Guerrapata in Spanish is the tick. And we said the only reason it's running because the blood of Jesus keeps it going. So we called it the Guerrapata. And I'm at Plaza Las Americas at the mall. And somehow I got into a Puerto Rican pretzel. We weren't moving a bit. The traffic was stopped right there where the Cheesecake Factory is now that it used to be valet parking. Right smack dab in front of the main entrance of the mall. <coughs> We're stuck, we're stuck. No air conditioning, windows down. And the guy behind me starts beep, 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 and I'm looking in the mirror saying, beep, great, what do you think I can do? He's beep, 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 beep. And I'm like, boy, well, people down here, wait, well, what's gonna happen? Next thing I know, he's getting closer, then he rammed my car. The Gerapata got smashed in the back. And I got out of the car, and this guy went, well, get out of the car, and he went ballistic. Oh my gosh, and he was screaming half in Spanish, some in English, and I said, are you in a hurry? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, if you are, then you just slow way down because I'm calling the police. You, you've rammed my car. And you think that calmed him down? Uh-oh. No, no, he got madder and madder. He went to my face and I said, listen, it's Christmas. There's no need to be this upset. And he said, well, you're the one calling the police and I said look at my car I'm not going to call the police Just we shouldn't be arguing like this and he said you're not going to call the police I said no uh, it's Christmas time Merry Christmas and oh, by then a crowd of people had gathered we shook hands I don't remember if we embraced or not but everybody started walking it looked like it was going to be a catastrophe yeah. and a fight and whatever maybe who knows why don't I have a machete area <laughs> anyway everybody applauded it was a happy ending we were like See, wherever you are in life, we have the option whether to speak death or to speak life. All right, say it out loud, real loud. Speak life. Speak life. Absolutely. Well, last week we looked at uh, Ephesians chapter 4. And it says, let no corrupt, let no rotten word proceed out of your mouth, but only that which produces edification, building up. And I didn't mention it last week, but the next part, of the next verse says this, do not 
grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, earlier this year, actually the first message of the year, uh, Brother Errol uh, talked to us about the importance of cultivating the presence of God. Every day and throughout the year, cultivating the presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit, cultivating it. In other words, it's something we work on, cultivating it. And so the point here is this. When we speak words of death, when we speak words of fault-finding, of complaining, of murmuring, all those type of words, according to the scriptures here, it grieves the Holy Spirit. You know, we our flesh may feel good. When I told them, you know, your flesh may feel all excited and everything, but the Holy Spirit inside of you is it, it's being grieved. It's quenching the Holy Spirit. Now, on the, other, on the other side, when we speak words of life, speak words of edification, guess what? It makes happy the Holy Spirit. So one of the ways we cultivate the presence of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives is by the words that we speak. You know, and every one of us probably has heard messages like this. But you know what I've learned? I don't get it the first time or the second time. We need to be reminded of, of truth. And um, so uh, this is a rima the Lord gave me some time ago. Cultivate your, let's read it together. Cultivate your fellowship with my spirit, who is your counselor, your comforter, and your coach. It's not by self-effort or reasoning of man, but by utter dependence upon my spirit that fruit comes to maturity. This is so important. We need, you need, I need, this church needs the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, we're not going to, uh, I'm not going to ask you what I ask you. On a 10 scale, I go through them. Figure out what you give yourself. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. How many of you got a 10 on that one? Love, joy, peace, long suffering. That one, we have a 12. <laughs> Kindness, or humility too, right? <laughs> Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. See, this is one aspect of the fruit of the Spirit. And so we need, we need the Holy Spirit. Now, um, the next verse we're looking at is there in James, James 3. James is talking, and he says, out of the mouth can perceive blessing and cursing. Out of the same <coughs> mouth, the same mouth, your mouth. You know, there was a Greek philosopher named Plutius. Plutius. And he said, I've often regretted my speech, but never my silence. You know, sometimes if you don't know what to say, the best thing to do, Mark quotes that verse, uh, where is it, at the end of... Uh, Last verse of... Proverbs 17, even a fool's thought lies when he keeps his mouth shut. Good. Praise the Lord. See, by him being able to quote that tells me he's pretty acquainted with the, the tool, the instrument of God's word. Good example for us, Mark. Thank you so very much. Okay. So, um, really, dear ones, you and I have a choice. How, what the fruit of our lips is going to look like. What the fruit of our lips is going to taste like. Okay. Um, uh, even if I gave you 20 bucks, how many of you would like to have a drink of this no. one? No. Okay. I don't know. I heard, so, I heard something really interesting. Down in Australia, um, down in Australia, the, the young people, what they do is they put a beer in, the, in their shoe, okay, in their boot, and then they drink it. You know, it's sort of a young thing. And the article said, not smart, because there's microorganisms, there's bacteria in there that can mess your health up even for life. You know, so, but anyway, uh, I'm a little thirsty. You excuse me? I tell you what, say, Pastor, Please we love you. Thank you. You know, people... Church congregants make a big difference in pastor's life because some people pray upon pastors, P-R-E-Y. Well, what's wrong with him? Doesn't seem to be anointed or just uh, uh, nothing's happening. 
You know, I tell you what, that's preying upon. Now, I thank God for the memory of Mama Juana, uh, Mama Blake, because she yes. was with us for 15 or so years, intercessor, and I knew there was one woman. I know a lot of you pray for Carmen and I, but this woman prayed for Tori and Carmen, you know, and she not prayed upon us, prayed for us. Okay, and I appreciate your prayer for Carmen and I. So, you know, the truth simply is this. As we said last week, your words are seeds. Make them good ones. And make good the fruit of your lips. Now, Jesus, Jesus in Luke 6, he says, Every tree is known by its own fruit. And we have established the biblical thing that we are all trees. You know, spiritually, we're trees. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good, an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know, this is very well known. And so we have some work to do because Jesus says out of the good, out of the treasure of a person's heart, the mouth will speak. And if there's if there's evil there, if there's unforgiveness, if there's bitterness there, there's in there, guess what? The is going to come out. Okay? But if there's if there's the, this Holy Spirit, if there's a good treasure of God's Word in there, guess what? Good treasure is going to come out. Okay? For instance, in Proverbs uh, 15, 23, a man or a woman has joy by the answer of their mouth. You know, this is upward. I, may be, I think uh, Cheryl Lynn gave a mess, good message last October or whenever it was. Uh, about saying yes again, or renewing your yes to the Lord. You know, and so uh, one of the ways you want joy, say yes to the Lord. Say whatever He's asking you to do, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I submit, Lord. Yes, Lord. You see, when you live that way and it comes from your heart, there's joy in that. But also, joy comes when we answer inwardly. You know, when we, when we look at ourselves, we can say, well, I blew it again. I'm never going to get this together. Never going to happen for me or for the church. You know, what you need to, you know what we're doing? We're speaking death to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we need to speak inwardly life to ourselves. Yeah. Todo lo puedo en Cristo que me fortalece. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we have joy by the words we speak to God. We have joy by the words we speak to ourselves. We have joy by the words we speak to others. Turn to somebody and say, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Turn to somebody else and say, God is with you. God is for you. These are words of life. Words of life. Words of life. You know, and also speaking outward. Haha, I like this one. Okay, Satan, get behind me. Okay, that's speaking outward too. Yeah. You know, when you when you let the devil know who he is and where to go and you resist him, there's joy in that too. Listen, there's tremendous joy in in, in mercy and forgiveness. Oh, it's wonderful. You know, when, when you've sinned and then you say, God, I'm sorry, and God forgives you. Oh, there's wonderful joy in that. But there's even greater joy in overcoming that sin, yes. whatever it might be, you know. Yeah. So, uh, anyway... Uh, Moving on to the next scripture, uh, ah, verse 28. You want to be wise? It says the heart of the wise studies how to answer. You know, it just isn't you luck into this thing. No, no, you, you, you start watching your speech. You watch your words. You watch your thoughts. And you, you say, hmm, am I speaking life or am I speaking death here to my spouse or my family or my work or fellow workers, whatever it is. We want to speak life. And we need to study this. And, and Jesus said, um, out of the treasure. See, this is why it's important. Again, a lot of you do this. And Mark gave a good example. We put the word of God into us. We treasure it. Guess what? Good is going to come out of us. This is a powerful verse. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, Proverbs 15 says a lot about the tongue. And it says, a wholesome tongue, a healing tongue, is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. A wholesome tongue, a healing tongue. I tell you what, just touch your tongue right now. If you would. Touch your tongue. Touch it. Father, I pray for every tongue here, Lord, that you, Lord, would just sanctify every tongue here, Lord God, that our tongues would speak 
life. In Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. You know, it's a good thing to surrender your whole body, including your tongue, to the Lord. Praise the Lord. I give God the glory because there were a time in my life I used my tongue to roll lots of joints and use my tongue, you know, and, and roll joints. They called me a holy roller. Or they didn't call me a holy roller. They said, you're a good roller cord. You know, so nice the times they give it to me. You know, but I use my tongue now to praise the Lord. I use my tongue to bless God. I use my tongue to kiss my wife. <laughs> All right. All right. Proverbs 16. Look at this. The heart of the wise. The heart of the wise. And corazón de sabio. Enseña la boca. Teaches his mouth. Or teaches her mouth. You see, when we, when we get connected with the spirit of wisdom, uh, he will teach us. And we can, we can teach our hearts what to speak and what not to speak. And look at this. It says, add learnings to his lips. And the one of the learnings is, pleasant words are like a honeycomb. Sweetness to the soul, health to the bones. Oh, what would have happened? Those two women who had that argument, if one of them would say, you know, you're probably having a hard day, it's okay. You go ahead. God bless you. No. The mother would still be there, the man would still have his 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 wife, you know, but you know this, you know, and, it, and it's a spirit in the world that wants to be argumentative and, and all of that, but we need to be wise against all that and speak life. Okay, I have a challenge for you. All right. I was, uh, a few years ago, I was reading one of the scriptures, and I just got a picture of myself like a cake. Now, some of you um, can relate to that, you know, in your college days or whatever. Some of the guys would say, everybody chip in a few bucks or whatever, and you get a cake of beer, and then you have a cake party, you know, and then you, you, you do the spigot, and everybody drinks and all of that. Well, the Lord gave me a picture of myself that I was like a cake, and when, when, when somebody uh, did the spigot of my life and I spoke or they interacted with me, something was going to come out. You know, and so the Lord just, you know, he, he gives me these words and everything. And I, and I said, well, I want to be a Holy Spirit cake. You know, I want to be a beer cake. I want to be a, a God cake. Yes. You know, and so I was thinking about it. And the first K there is, is, uh, is the word kindness. It's the word kindness. That when people drink of my life, hopefully they're going to drink kindness. And when people drink of your life in this church, Hopefully they'll bring kindness. And when we have the heart seminar on Tuesday and people that you've never met before, as they interact with you, they'll say, oh, what a kind person. You know, serve others. So, you know, so, you know we want to be, I want this church to be a, a cake, a cake church, you know. The, the, the K is kindness. The E, we can put different ones in there. E would be encouragement or edification. You know, when people interact with you, one of my spiritual mentors said the greatest ministry in the body of Christ is the ministry of encouragement, leaving people higher than when you met them. All right? And scripture says encourage one another once a week when you meet on Sunday. No! It says encourage one another daily, daily. So we want to be cakes so that when people do the tap in our lives, they go, oh, that person's an encourager. You know, some people are like that, have a, a dark cloud over them. You sort of sometimes, you, you know, you need to help them and everything, but sometimes you just sort of avoid them because it's going to be gloom and doom and woe is me. You know, and I know we have seasons like that, but if that's the, some people, that's their whole season, their whole life, you know. So anyway, the K is kindness. The E is encouragement or edification. G would be, what do you think? Goodness. Goodness. Oh, that's a good one. But that's not it. But it could be. Good, goodness would be fine. Great. That's another good one. Godliness. Generosity. Oh, man. I need to write this down. Really. Really. Goodness. Uh, generosity. Gratefulness. Godliness. Yeah, take notes of these one. Gentleness. Godliness. Godliness. Yeah, these are all good things. Okay, well, mine was. <laughs> 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 
I was grace. <laughs> but all those other ones are very, very good. Yeah, but you know? grace encompasses everything. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes you meet somebody, you know, oh, they're full of whatever they're full of, you know. <laughs> Jesus was full of two things. In John chapter 1, I think verse 14, the ones who lived with Jesus for three years, they looked at him, they examined his life, and the summary was that he was full of two things. He was full of grace, and he was full of truth. You know, and so I want us to be a Holy Spirit church, K church, you know, that when people drink from us, you know, kindness will come out. Encouragement will come out. Edification will yes. come out. Godliness will come out. Grace will come out. Generosity will come out. A gratitude will come out. You know, just the drink. But, you know, and, and love is. So when we speak, when we speak, people are drinking in our words. So, you know, so let's just, with God's help, why don't you put your hand on your heart and on your mouth? And, and pray with me. Lord God, I give you my heart. Whatever surgery is needed, please do the heart surgery. Help my heart to be filled with goodness. And if there's any evil in there, I repent of it. I want to be filled with you, God. And I yield my mouth to you. Help me, Holy Spirit, to speak life, to speak life, to speak life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen, Amen. Listen, it's been so good having you all here, you listening in. Uh, check out uh, Abundant Life by the Sea. Dot com. Is that right, Errol? Did I get it right? Yeah. And you can get the notes there also. All right. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give God a